Welcome back to the 2016 World Barista Championship. It's my pleasure to introduce our 36th competitor, the barista champion of Germany, Erna Tosberg. <laughs> Hi, hello. Nice to meet you. Let's get involved. We're seeing the 36th competitor from Germany, Erna Tosberg. Tosberg. Something like that. Do we have a few uh, German people sitting here online at the moment? Great to see some support coming through in the comments as well. We've got really big days at the World Bristol Championship main stage here. We're looking at about 12 hours to be able to get through the 32 competitors we need okay, to each Irvin, day. When you're ready, you and may amazing begin your to see such beautiful performances Sorry, from such hear. strong when you're ready, and competent you may baristas. begin your presentation. Thank you. <laughs> Are you ready? Yes. Comfortable? Yes. Let's do this. Time. Good morning, judges. Welcome. My name is Erna, and I proudly present you today the result of a new variation of the natural processing method that promises us sweet, clean, and bright naturals. I think this is super exciting because it offers us an environmentally friendly processing method and also a very friendly cup to the customer. Here you go. I will, I will show you how this processing works here on stage with the help of blueberries. I will tell you all about it later. So the coffee I'm serving you today is called the Black Unicorn. It was produced in Costa Rica by the Cumbres del Poas and it was grown in the Central Valley at an elevation of 1300 to 1500 meters. The varieties are Katura and Katuai. This day lot was picked in the middle of January, which was the peak of the harvest in that region. In order to produce a very sweet cup, only ripe cherries with a sugar content of 22 to 24 percent bricks were picked. And in order to produce a very clean cup, the cherries were rinsed and floated after picking. Now, what's new about the black unicorn? In order to produce a bright cup, the drying is divided into two phases. The first one is called the sauna. In that phase, the cherries on the patio are covered with a black plastic foil so they start to sweat, just like in a sauna. After four hours, the foil is removed so the cherries are refreshed and can dry. And then it is put back on. And this is repeated constantly for five days. And after that, the cherries are moved to a ventilated greenhouse where they are dried on raised beds for another 15 days. These are the espressos for my signature drink. So I guess you're wondering right now, what is new about the black unicorn? How does the sauna affect the cup? The answer is cell integrity. We all know about sugar migration during natural processing. Unfortunately, it's not that easy. As Professor Flavio Borem from Brazil points out, if you dry a coffee too fast, water leaves the cells inside the seed too fast, which makes the cell walls collapse. This collapse 
leads to inconsistencies, like off flavors often associated with natural processed coffee. But if you give the coffee time, so the sugar molecules have time to replace the water molecules and the cell structure is maintained, sorry about that, then we're gonna get sweet and clean and bright naturals. <laughs> And I think this is exactly what's happening during the sauna effect. Now, what are you going to find in the cup? Flavors of blueberry, raisin, Brazil nut and cacao. The coffee is extremely balanced. It has a very friendly sweetness, a surprising lively acidity for a natural processed coffee, and a light bitterness that rounds it up really nicely. And what I really like about this coffee is the texture. It's very smooth and round. It has a medium body and a very long finish. Now judges, please only evaluate the crema and then wait for further indications. Here you go. For you. And for you. Now please take the spoons, stir 10 times in a circular motion and then put the spoons back where you found them and wait. Perfect. <laughs> we roasted this coffee three weeks ago with a focus on texture and sweetness. And we roasted it for 12 minutes with a 17% development time. And now please judges, enjoy the black unicorn. Very interesting to see Erna talking about the key to really clean and good natural processed coffees is slow drying so that uh, water can be replaced by sugars. And I think that's the case for washed coffees as well. To get the best qualities, you cannot speed up the drying process. Otherwise, you just kill the cell integrity and the coffee will taste woody very fast. But it also has a lot of risk along with that as well, right? You have lots more opportunity for over fermentation or molds, all this kind of thing. So you need to control it. A lot of new tamping devices on stage this year and uh, it seems to slow down the process a little bit but more likely the espressos will be tasting more consistent and sweeter. That's my guess anyway. I mean it, it certainly removes a lot of the variability and you know some of the uh, maybe control that we used to have and really makes it more specific and, and more repeatable in a much more easy fashion. It's definitely not up for uh, measuring by eye anymore, that's for sure. I think it's a bit of a lost art though, you know, like being able to exactly understand a roast and look at a look at a porter filter and know exactly how much coffee is going in there. It's now done by scales. Yeah, it's almost like it's a different discipline today. Uh, of course the coffees taste a lot different today than it used to do when we were competing. The roasting style has changed, uh, the green coffee has become a lot better and also the barista skills I think is much more consistent just by the use of scales and all these kind of new tools. Uh, but, having said that, a bad espresso still, ta still tastes horrible and it's quite difficult to come across a really great espresso when you walk around randomly in the street, I think. But here, at the WBC, I'm guessing most of these espressos are delicious. Hey judges, are you ready for more information? I've been using the same brew recipe for all three courses 
dosing 20 grams in, extracting 50 grams out in around 25 seconds. I'm now pairing the black unicorn with the local milk from Münster in Germany in a ratio of 1 to 5. 1 to 5 because this turns the blueberry into coconut. The milk has a fat content of 3.8% and a sugar content of 4.7%. This leads to a creamy texture and a light caramel note in the beverage. Also, you will get hazelnut and milk chocolate. Here you go. Please enjoy. I love that the competitors are now able to choose the size of the milk drink. Uh, it makes it a lot more interesting and you have to work a lot harder to make that kind of balanced drink than just serving a 150 ml uh, cappuccino. The, the idea around opening up that uh, milk beverage was that we were having to use specific coffee, specific roast profiles and specific types of extractions to be able to get good flavour coming through in a milk drink. But now this really opens up the types of coffees you can use to still present uh, coffees that are going to score really well for the judges as, as a milk based beverage. You could always read on the judges score sheet when I was competing, the cappuccinos tasted too milky. So finally someone took that and, uh, and changed that rule. So one of the things we've seen pre in previous year's competitions is that uh, baristas will very often have uh, two different coffees that they're using, one for the espresso course and one for the milk course, but this year um, almost all of the competitors are using just one coffee because they're able to adjust the amount or volume of milk that they're putting in to still get great taste out of their coffee rather than needing something with a higher extraction yield or uh, much stronger flavours to come through for the milk. And it for sure simplifies the presentation. You just have to focus on one coffee. And it's less confusing for the judges, I guess, so they can really dig into this coffee that they're being presented and, and you know, explore the flavors that they're tasting. So my microphone says blueberries. I will indicate when you may try them. Looks like the judges are getting served some steamed blueberries. That's kind of interesting. I'll be right back. Okay, judges, are you ready for the signature drink? Let's take a look back at the processing. In front of you, you now find my microprocessed blueberries here on stage that represent the sauna effect. From left to right, you find a fresh berry, one that has been in the sauna and then drying, and that one that has been in the sauna, drying in the sauna, and is now drying. I will indicate when you can eat them. Now, sugar migration is not the only thing happening during coffee processing. Also, a part of the sugars is transformed into lactic acid through fermentation. And since we already saw a very nice synergy between milk and the black unicorn, I'd like to take that synergy to the next level. So, I went to our dairy farm in Münster and together we fermented milk for eight hours. The results are 10 grams of yogurt with millions of lactic acids. I'm adding these to four espressos. And for the balance, since the acids ate some of the sugars, three grams of sugar and a tiny pinch of sea salt. The salt reduces the bitterness of the crema and also increases your saliva flow, which adds more protein to the drink and gives you a slightly denser mouthfeel. Now, last ingredient, the juice of the berries you find in front of you. One drop should come out. Don't help us. There you are. And now I'm mixing all the ingredients with my swizzle stick. Now, the lactic acid of the fermented milk together with the blueberry juice will transform the blueberry flavor you tasted in the espresso into blood orange. Also, you will get notes of tamarind, nut, and cacao. 
Now please eat the berries with a spoon from left to right and you will note an increasing sweetness and also the acidity turning into brightness. Please enjoy them. Serving you the drink lukewarm. And the garnish is edible. It's made of a blueberry puree with a sugar content of 23% bricks that represent the blueberry flavor of the espresso and also the cherry ripeness. Please enjoy. Here you go. For you, please enjoy. Please enjoy. A lot of uh, old school, but now modern fermentation techniques being used in this uh, signature drink. Sorry to Serving yogurt. One last thing. I hope the black unicorn will always remind you of how important cell integrity is for consistent, bright, high quality coffees. Thank you so much for being my guests. Time. Round of applause for the barista champion Very of solid. Germany, Erna Tosberg. Very solid performance by Erna Tosberg from Germany. Congratulations. Excellent job. Thank you. How does it feel? Yeah, it's great. Good. Yeah. Is that my official time? That was your final time, yes. Okay. <laughs> um, is there anybody watching at home or backstage? That A you lot like of people, actually. Things? Yes. Go ahead. And like say over it. there. <laughs> There's like the team, Vespa. They supported me all the way, and then a lot of friends came and family, and I'm just so happy each of you is here. Thank you so much, and everybody at home who's watching, hi, thank you. <laughs> and yeah, I, I think everybody knows who's helped, and I'm just grateful. Well, we are grateful that we got to see that wonderful performance. One more round of applause for our barista champion of Germany, <laughs> Erna Tosk.